Hello everybody and welcome to the CAD Cage brought to you by Zentech Consultants. Uh, in the CAD Cage we put two CAD systems side by side and we test an important design function to see if one is better or worse or if both systems are awash. Alright, so why don't we get started with today's competitors which are AutoCAD going head to head, to head against BricsCAD. Um, and today I want to test the, the processes related to creating templates and standards, right, which are kind of the starting points for just about everything we do in the CAD world. Um, and the first thing I want to, you know, here I've got, uh, you know, AutoCAD on the left side of my screen, and I've got BricsCAD over here on the right side of my screen. And I want to talk about kind of a fundamental difference uh, between the, the way both systems think, particularly when it comes to setup and creation of, of templates and standards. Uh, you know, AutoCAD has kind of been working the same processes, right, that we've all kind of grown used to for 30 plus years right now, which is that when you want to do things, like start with some of the basic concepts, right? The first thing we often think of in a template is we, we have to create layers. Well, we know that if we go to the Home tab, we can go to our Layers properties, we can bring up our layers, and we can just go in here and we can start creating layers. Not a problem, right? It's an individual feature, an individual function. Same thing if we need to go in and we have to add XRefs and blocks and things like that. We know that we have to go to our you know, insert tab and we have to go to the attach tool and then we can start picking what are we trying to bring in, whether it's, you know, uh, drawings and extras and PDFs and so on. All right, so that concept of, of these individual features and tools and functions, we've been working with for many, many decades. Absolutely nothing wrong with those. It works really, really well. Um, Brickhead, on the other hand, has kind of an entirely different approach to this, which is that they have opted, and, and I, I will say I kind of like this, uh, they've opted to kind of organize everything into a single interface. In other words, all right, doing the same things. If I want to go in and I want to create layers here inside of BricsCAD, I can just go over to the side panel right, and I can open up the layers tool, right, which is really nice, right? All my layers are right here. I've got all the same features for adding new layers. And, you know, it's got all the same exact layer features for, you know, layers by viewport and colors and line types and descriptions, everything under the sun. All the same between AutoCAD and BricsCAD. That's, you know, the, the tools here for layers are the same. But what I do like here is that everything here, so if I want to go to attachments for XRefs and, and PDFs and so on, I don't have to run a separate command. I just click the next button down, right? And you see that here I can attach drawings and images and PDFs and even point clouds. All right, and same thing, you know, sheet sets. If I want to build sheet sets into my templates, then I have to go over here in AutoCAD and I know I have to go over to my manage, right? And I have to choose my sheet sets or excuse me, you know, I guess it's on the view tab. There's view, sheet set manager. Here, I just click on it. All right, same thing, tool palettes. Over here, I have to run tool palettes as a separate command in AutoCAD and so on, even to the point of you know, full integration to their online cloud hosting service, right? It's a, it's a different set of tools to access those when you get over into AutoCAD, right? To, to get into the uh, Autodesk 360 items and so on. So it's a basic concept, right? Um, I, I, I can't say one's better than the other. I kind of prefer the BricsCAD version here, being having everything in one setup. But I think that becomes much more important and much more noticeable when you actually get into the idea of setting up your standards and your templates. Um, over in AutoCAD, right, traditional setup, let's just talk about dealing with, with you know, basic uh, template setup, right? So we're gonna go to our options, right? Where we're setting up our initial design, right? Here for our, our drawings here inside of AutoCAD. And we're, we're all kind of used to this options tab where we can set all the support file paths that we need to work in, right? We can see where our customization, where our tool palettes are, we can set our templates, right? What folders are the templates in and the sheet sets, right? We can set our, our graphic displays, right? All of these, you know, plotting and publishing options, default printers, all of this is here and it's kind of in, in this area, right? But you see, it's just a long list of items. And one of the things that you have to kind of do here is you kind of have to know what you're looking for in AutoCAD, right? Here are the template settings and I have to know that I go to template settings and then there's my drawing templates. And then I have to kind of figure out, okay, if I click on this, then I can go over here and I can browse or change the path. It takes a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of training, a little bit of know-how to kind of get to where you want to be in this structure, right? And it can be a little time consuming to find the right options that you're looking for in AutoCAD, right? On the opposite side of this, when we get over here to the settings inside of BricsCAD, it comes back to that same concept that I was talking about of keeping everything in one location, right? All the settings for the entirety of BricsCAD are all contained in this single dialog box. And one of the things that I think is really, really impressive here, right, is it's, you know, you, they can be fully collapsed, but it's got this idea of a search functionality built into this. So if I need to go in and do things like, hey, I need to set the default template that I want everybody to use, I can just type template, 
right here. And you see that automatically it starts expanding me out and showing me all the template setups. But now I can just go to the next. Oh, there it is, the sheet set template path. Okay, this is where it's all, you know, going to be saved and stored. And one of the things that I truly like about this is that every single command here inside of BricsCAD in terms of setup, it tells you exactly what those items do. So you see, I can move to the next template setup, right? Here's where, oh, there it is. There's my default template setup, right? And it says this specifies the path and name of the default template that's used when blah, blah, blah. Very, very useful in helping you structure and set up everything that you need. Right? And you can really even just start up here at the top. I, and just kind of work your way down manually, you know, one at a time, setting all the different values that you might need. But I find that, you know, the search feature up here, the integrated search and the descriptions go a long, long way towards getting those basic options set up and built. All right. Now, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, in terms of setting up your template in AutoCAD, all right, like I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and we want to create layers. OK, so we know we can go to our layer properties, build all of our layers. Right, we can go over here and start building, you know, layer states and layer sets if you know that those are there. Then we're gonna have to bring in blocks, right? We're gonna have to set up line types and text styles and dimension styles, all of which are separate commands. And it's not bad, right? Once you're a CAD manager and, and, and you're kind of been responsible for a while, and there's plenty of references you can find online to help you work through that. So all great, but what they're all individual commands, and there's there's like I said, a big learning curve involved in the way that AutoCAD does this. Versus one of the absolute best features that I really, really love about working in BricsCAD here is when I go to the Tools Drawing Explorer, you see that I've got a list, right, that flies out here. See layers, layer states, line types, multi-leaders, textiles, dimension styles. Those are all the things that you need to set up in your templates in order of importance. You can, it, it, it's structured this way. And what's really nice about this, I can just go over and say, look, I just want to start layers are my first starting point. Notice when I bring this up, you see that here it's showing me my current drawing. And you see that I can do all of my setup. And this can be moved off to a separate document so you can see what it's doing uh, in real time. But you say I can set up all the layers in this drawing and I can build all my layers here. Then I can set up all my layer states in the same dialog, all my line types, multi-line styles, multi-leaders, text, dimension styles, whatever it is that I need, right? And I can create new ones. I can copy existing ones. Right? I can regen the ones on screen. And they can even toggle on so that if I've already got like example dimensions drawn on screen, as I'm making changes here, it'll update in real time and I can see what it's actually going to look like. I can build my tables, data links, visual styles, XREF, images, everything that you could possibly need is right here. Even to the point, one of the things I like here is you can go right to the blocks. Right? And the blocks are great because you know what I'm going to do here real quick? I've got in, in both of these just kind of show you. Um, I opened up the, some, some uh, architectural floor plans here right, that have blocks in them instead of just blank drawings. When I'm dealing with blocks in AutoCAD, I can go to the blocks, insert, and you see it shows me all the ones that I have in here, right? Or I can go down to the, you know, to the block editor, right? If I want to add and insert blocks, or if I want to click insert, I can go to blocks from libraries. Then I have to go out and, and go to my, you know, libraries, and I have to browse out to where those are, right? I have to go to browse block libraries and go find the blocks that I need. And bringing them in is always a little bit tedious, right? I'm not a huge fan of their new insert command versus here. When I deal with things like blocks inside of BricsCAD, I can just go right to the Drawing Explorer and go right to the block section. And you see it's just that whole Drawing Explorer. But what's really, really nice here is that every one of these blocks that I click on, I'm getting a preview. Right? And here, I can do things like save the block. So the W block feature, I don't need it. I can just save this right out anywhere that I need on my network. I can drag and drop blocks in here. And one of the things I really like here is when you find a block and you're like, hey, that's really useful. I want to be able to add that to, to like my tool palettes, right? I can just go ahead and I can just add that to my current tool palette. So I can take any block in any drawing and very quickly just add that into my tool palette. Same with all, you know, things like line types and so on, right? Pretty much everything under the sun, textiles, et cetera, tools, I can add those right to my tool palette. So it's this idea of putting everything into this one really simple to use dialogue structure for the entirety of setting up your templates, your creations, your settings inside of BricsCAD. I think it's really impressive. Definitely saves a lot of time and aggravation. So while AutoCAD stuff we're all used to and it works really, really well and there's no negatives to it, um, I think in this particular CAD cage battle, winner is going to have to be BricsCAD. I just think that that single pane user interface is really, really amazing. So there you have it, folks. Winner this week is Bricks Cad. We'll catch you next time in the Cad Cage.